Hello friends, last week in my video, I told you that the market had gone up on the prior week's Friday only because of short covering and it was not a bull market. What exactly did I say? Let's take a look here. Now to sum it up, I would say last week's rally of the Nifty on Friday was not a bull move, not yet. We need support from all these pressure points that I told you they must reverse and they must uh, improve. Can it happen? Yes, it can happen. It can happen in one day, but till it's not happened, it has not really happened. So wait and watch. Well, this was based on statistical data and whatever you do, disregard emotional, unbacked and biased uh, uh, findings available in the social media and stick to numbers. Numbers don't go wrong and they don't lie. Now in this week's video, it's all about whether the fall in the US markets that you saw last week are going to impact the Indian markets which have so far been defying gravity. And let's take a very, very statistical approach and look at it from a very unemotional point of view. Before I proceed further, there are two aspects which I want to talk to you about. A lot of my online family has requested that my videos are a little too long and I should keep them brief. Well, here is a solution for you. If you go to the description below this video, if you click on more below this video, you will see that this video is divided into a dozen or more chapters, which each chapter uh, uh, given a heading or a description, Nifty, Bank Nifty, retail uh, risk appetite, uh, in-house indicators, feel free to pick and choose which chapter you want to use. And the second thing is about your comments. While I encourage a very healthy uh, debate and uh, a give and take with my online family, do remember before you post nasty comments that A, I don't provide any kind of paid services. I'm not here to sell any hardware, software, subscription programs or uh, 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 any, any kind of uh, uh, money management programs. So I don't need to take your uncouth comments. Now let's dive right into our video and coming up on your screen is the weekly market roundup which tells us that it was the bank nifty which went up marginally and the nifty actually underperformed for a change. The US dollar index, the Dixie, fell a whopping 111 basis points and this was basically due to the slam dunk decline in the headline indices on Friday night. The uh, decline in uh, uh, the Dixie also pushed up commodity or hard asset prices. So gold and silver went up and hey, look at what I told you last week. There is no super cycle. It might have irritated some of you who posted nasty comments here, but look at what's happening to base metals and uh, your energy counters. So there's no super cycle theory and what I've been posting up on my telegram channels about energy counters, oil and gas is coming out exactly as expected. The USD INR gained six uh, basis points and that, that basically tells you that the rupee is weakening. Not exactly a great sign. It's a small red flag here. The Indian 10 year benchmark bond yields fell four basis points, which means bond prices rose a little, which is one of the few reasons why the bank nifty went up. NSE market cap went up uh, a little under 0.05%. MWPL or market wide positions rose sharply to 7.5% and the US headline indices fell across the board and therefore they dragged the domestic Indian markets. Friends, let's now see the interest rate sensitive stocks. Now, this is something I have been telling you since many, many quarters. I'm not really very gung-ho on interest rate sensitives. What are these banks, NBFCs, companies that depend on EMI based sales for their top line and bottom line growth and companies that are up to here, neck deep in debt where interest rates rising can actually make a lot of difference in their PL accounts. Look at how over a 4, 12 and 20 week period, the interest rate sensitive stocks are uh, giving you what kind of return. Over a 4 week period, 
the IRS or interest rate sensitive stocks are negative 1.98% whereas the Nifty is positive 1.62. The bank Nifty is negative almost 2.5%. Over a 12 week period, the Nifty gained 12.07%. The interest rate sensitives are up only 7.61. The story repeats itself over a 20 week period. I rest my case, which is why I've been telling you Theta DK in my uh, weekly uh, strategy uh, chapter that you can seek and watch at leisure. Friends, I now come to our in-house uh, indicators, many of which you won't find anywhere on the internet. These are proprietary to us. The MWPL or market-wide position limits, this is the extent of exposure utilized by traders as compared to the percentage allowed by SEBI. At 38.07%, MWPL has shot up very, very smartly from 30.51% post-expiry. This is the biggest first week post-expiry gain in the last uh, five months, which is a 20-week period that this chart covers. That tells you that risk appetite was up. Friends, before I proceed further, a word of caution. High MWPL brings with it high statistical beta which is pure price volatility why because financial and emotional commitment has risen in the market what happens when any bad news comes it becomes a crowded exit because everybody is rushed in now everybody needs to rush out volatility will go up which is why i have been telling you to maintain hacienda hedges it's in this video up here please keep tail risk hedges you are trading into very volatile markets. Now, indicator number two, the stock and index futures turnover fell expectedly because the prior week's turnover spike was the routine expiry week spike when people uh, uh, square up their expiring month contracts and reinitiate them in the next month, which results in double turnover. But the fall is not as big as or as deep as uh, it is in the prior month. So here again, Traders do seem to be participating. They still have a hangover of bullishness. Do remember that majority of the fall last week has come only on Friday. Now the advanced decline ratio. This is a weekly average of all five trading sessions last week. The Nifty has lost 0.47%, but the advanced decline ratio has come down from 1.51 in the prior week to 0.99. Which means for every 100 losing stocks, there were 99 gainers only. That tells you that one marshmallow buying conviction was poor. What is the marshmallow theory? It's given in a video, the description and uh, a pinned comment uh, below this video contain all the hyperlinks to all the videos I want you to see. Now friends, I come to the prompt month basis. Basis is nothing but the premium or discount enjoyed by futures compared to spot. Like the options premium, basis constantly erodes as we approach expiry, but basis going into negative is always a telltale sign of short selling. And here you are, the nifty basis is inverted by 6.15 points. That tells you that the future is trading at a discount to cash. That too in the first week after expiry, clear cut signs of short selling. Even the bank nifty basis has come down very, very sharply to almost one third of what it was in the prior week. Now friends, our in-house indicator impetus, which you've been trusting for almost four years, and here again, a red flag. Remember, it was the bank Nifty which went up and the Nifty which fell last week. What do you see here? The Nifty is showing a higher impetus reading. Impetus indicates force in buying or selling. Now the Nifty has fallen on higher force. The bank Nifty has risen on lower force. That means the two indices are diverging from each other. Remember what I showed you in the last two weeks. A bicycle where two wheels are going in opposite directions cannot hope to ride well. It has to tumble. And check a look at uh, take a look at your screen here. This is what the market looks like. The uh, uh, the nifty has fallen the bank nifty has risen both the wheels are going in opposite directions bad sign now for an exclusive indicator lift weight thrust drag which you have been enjoying for three and a half years and it stood the test of time 
Now look at how the weekly chart shows you the Nifty has lost 0.47% on a week on week basis but the lift weight thrust drag index has gone up into positive territory after spending three weeks into negative. Friends, does it mean that I expect the markets to shoot up? No. If you watch the tutorial of how to read the lift weight thrust drag categories of the markets, you will see that this merely indicates that the market will go in the direction of the price, which is the nifty, uh, which is shown as a blue line. And the LWTD will only tell you the buying or short covering and selling or short selling forces. So what it basically tells you is that the nifty is down and what you can expect is short covering on declines. But do see the tutorial of the lift weight thrust drag indicator. You won't get this indicator on any other site. Friends, I now come to the bond market, which uh, is basically at the crux of all things that we do. Now, the bond yield, the Indian 10-year benchmark bond yield is now touching the lows that it has made in the first week of April of 2022. That means 27 month lows. Obviously, bond prices are higher. Does it mean that we are basically supposed to jump into guilt funds? To many of my online family, this comes as a surprise. But I assure you, I'm not, I'm not buying guilt funds as of now. Why? Because I'm not convinced. Am I willing to risk the opportunity loss of seeing the bus pass me by, the parade pass me by? Absolutely, yes. I would rather let the parade pass me by than get into the wrong price NAV in guild funds. That can give you a lot of grief because then you have to wait till redemption times and block your money. I would rather keep the powder dry and money in the bank. When will I uh, uh, buy into guild funds or make another move after having laddered since October 2021, hey, keep watching our free Telegram channel. That's where I put all our output there for free. The contact coordinates are on your screen as we speak. Friends, the bond market's done. I now come to the Bank Nifty. And what you can see on the daily chart on your screen is that this index rose on only one out of five trading sessions and it remained under pressure because the price closed below its month long moving average and the average itself seems to be falling. So the short term outlook appears to be nervous. Note how this uh, uh, index has closed below its moving average on all five trading sessions. So there was a slip and slide all through the week. Now let's take a look at the weekly chart. What you are seeing is a narrower range. Number one, number two and bearish inverted hammer which has just about closed above the bullish wedges upper trend line. The price remains above its 25 week moving average, which is a proxy for a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. So the month long, uh, so the medium term outlook is positive for now. But all that can change rather suddenly if the price declines, which it can. I have recorded a special segment at the fag end of this video, which will cover as to whether the US markets will drag the Indian markets lower. Please do make it a point to stay with me till the fag end. Now, in the week before last, this index was at number four on a statistical beta rankings that we maintain in-house. It fell two notches to number six, so the challenge level went down a little. Always a welcome sign. Last week, I advocated an estimated range between 52,875 on the upside and 49,700 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I estimate a range between 52,450 on the upside and 50,250 on the downside. Friends, a word of caution here. I expect the possibility of a breach of the lower support uh, uh, of the range that I specified. Also, in addition to these ranges, do please take a look at our daily, weekly, monthly pivot levels on our free Telegram channel. They'll help you laser precise your uh, trades because do remember, come 1st of October and SEBI's proposals are to reduce the number of strike prices available for index options, both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty. So you need to be laser precise in your trades or risk losing a lot of money. And this video about how to use our pivot points 
is there with a hyperlink in the description as well as in the pinned comment below. Now friends, I share with you the churn chart of the Bank Nifty. Look at how the Bank Nifty has fallen. This happens to be a daily chart and the churn is indicated as a red line. What is the churn? The churn is the percentage of turnover with relative comparison to the open interest. The higher the churn, the more traders are flipping the trade intraday rather than keeping a position open overnight. Now, why is the churn important? Because most of the deceptions, most of the unwinding and accumulation on the quiet, on the stealth is done by keeping the churn high. That's like a lot of smoke and dust being created in the atmosphere so as to hide the truth. A bigger churn has a possibility that big hands have unwound long positions on the bank nifty. Friends, let's take a look at uh, the nifty's daily chart on your screen right now. And what you can see is that this index has gained on all four trading sessions before falling very sharply on Friday, which happened to be a slam dunk session. The fall was predicted by our in-house lift weight thrust drag uh, 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 indicator, which I upload on our social media accounts, particularly my Telegram channel. So it put you ahead of the crowds. Now the price remains above the month long moving average, which itself is going upwards. So the short term outlook is positive for now and also relatively far better as compared to the bank nifty. If a fall occurs, all that can change. Switching now to the weekly chart, what you are seeing is that a small bearish candle has pierced the prior week's bullish candle, but not deep enough to call it a bearish piercing pattern. So a mild indication of weakness was seen. I've been warning you since the last two or three weeks that the price has gone too far higher above its 25 week exponential moving average, which is a six month long holding on cost of an average bull. So a mean reversion, therefore a consolidation or correction should be in the offing, which is what is happening now. Should this index stay below the weekly low of 24,686 on sustained closing basis, it can trigger further declines. Friends, in the week before last, this index was number 19 on our statistical beta rankings that we maintain in-house. It jumped eight, no eight notches to number 11. That's not good. The challenge levels have gone up. So let's be careful out there. Please do keep Hacienda hedges and uh, uh, maintain your stop losses diligently. Friends, here again, the final chart here for the Nifty is the churn ratio. Look at how the price has fallen sharply. This is a daily chart. So the last day's sharp fall is Friday. And look at how the churn has jumped. That tells you that there was a lot of smoke and dust being created as a screen, possibly to unwind long positions. Do remember that Nifty's future is at a discount to spot, which means the basis is inverted. Why does that happen? People have gone short which is why the basis is inverted. Keep looking out for two things all the time like your life depends on it. Number one, MWPL. Number two, churn ratio. Both for individual counters, the overall markets and the indices. Always look at MWPL and churn ratios first, foremost and always. Friends, in addition to these uh, 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 charts, do always look at our daily, weekly and monthly pivots, which we update every day, week and month on our free Telegram channel. Now, last week, I estimated a range between 25,425 on the upside and 24,250 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I estimate a range between 25,300 on the upside and 24,125 on the downside. Also, here again, I expect if at all there is to be a breach of this range, the possibility of a breach happening on the downside is higher than the breach appearing on the upside. Let's be careful out there. Friends, now I come to the last bit of statistical analysis wherein I gauge the retail risk appetite by uh, seeing their footprint in all four uh, segments of the futures and options space. I first look at the index futures turnover, 
which is uh, shown as a blue line and it contributed five basis points less. Where stock uh, futures uh, turnover is concerned, it is uh, indicated as a red line. Here again, the uh, uh, turnover contribution fell very sharply by 36 basis points. Futures are high risk, high capital demanding instruments and if turnover going down there, that means risk appetite is smaller. No other way out. Now, index options, the turnover contribution has shot up by 68 basis points. And stock options, the turnover has fallen by 27 basis points shown as a purple line. Now, even within the option space, the lowest risk instrument on the derivative space, relatively speaking, is the index option. And that is the only place where turnover has risen. What does it tell you? It tells me that the traders are playing a very, very safe hand. They are not convinced about going out there and writing checks out aggressively. Always a sign of caution. Friends, I now come to my uh, a weekly trading strategy, but don't go away after this uh, chapter. The final chapter is of whether the US markets are going to drag the Indian markets. So my focus continues to remain on interest rate sensitives. No surprise there. I already told you that I expect these interest rate sensitives to underperform the markets and therefore non-linear segment theta decay is what I will continue to bet on which I have been doing since the last two weeks. The other segment will be public sector units which will be a hotspot for trading activity because there a huge amount of MWPL has built up in the last couple of months. Now here again, because MWPL has built up, emotional and financial capital is invested, panic will also possibly be the highest. Oil and gas fell just as I expected and, and I told you repeatedly that there is no super cycle. It is just a figment of overactive imagination of the eco chambers who possibly and in all possibility are non-trading participants. I remain bearish and will continue to stay so in the next week barring any hurricane or geopolitical trigger which might push the price higher. And even if the price is pushed higher, it is likely to be a temporary blip which will encounter overhead supply coming in from trapped bulls who will want to get out and therefore cap the prices. This is your cue. As and when you basically see MWPL as well as TSTs, ticket size per trade, go up on any kind of blip up or blip down. It's time to sit up in your chair, take notice and act. Let statistics do the work for you because that is what it is supposed to do. The churn ratio is basically telling you a very good story in the commodity space and do hear the story please. Where bullion is concerned, I remain bullish over a long run and over here, is the thumbnail of the video that I recorded immediately after the budget and I gave you my views in no uncertain terms about what you should be doing in bullion. Do take a look at that video. The hyperlink is in the description and in the pinned comment below. Industrial metals, like I said, are sell on rallies, which means the stocks of these metal mining companies will remain under pressure where rallies are likely to see overhead supply coming in. Now watch the MWPL and churn ratios particularly carefully of metals, energy and other PSU counters. If at all smoke screens are going to be created to unwind, it is these uh, particular sectors that are likely to see the most amount of action and I want my online family to stay alert, stay sharp, have an extra cup of coffee, keep your eyes open and don't get sucked in. Now friends, like I promised you, my last segment of whether the US markets can drag the Indian markets. Now in my recent videos and more so on my Telegram channel, I have been warning you that I expect 2025 to be a year of pro-cyclical hysteresis beginning in the financial markets. Well, I've written a detailed uh, note on our Telegram channel wherein uh, I have written to you that I might just be a little wrong in the timing of the onset of pro-cyclicality. Earlier, I thought it would step in in 2025. Now, whether that happens in January 2025 or in December, that I wouldn't know. We'll super time it later. But now, 
it looks like there is some growing probability that procyclicality might just visit us like an unwelcome guest in 2024 itself. And since the market is already under an overhang of procyclicality, any weakness in the US market, yes, therefore will possibly drag the Indian markets lower. You think you will defy gravity forever? Sorry, statistically speaking, not happening. Do remember what I told you, what the statistics told you last week. It was a bear market rally. And the same statistics are telling me that you can't be bucking the trend forever. We basically monitor approximately four dozen FNO stocks in-house on our uh, statistical trading models very, very keenly. Uh, monitoring, of course, is of all FNO stocks, but four dozen of them are extra uh, 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 attention. Now, many of them are PSUs. Now, what we are seeing is that uh, the churn ratios, the MWPL and TSTs, ticket sizes per trade, are indicating that many of these counters have still not recovered from the kind of decline that they saw on 4th of June, which was the election result announcement day. And if at all they are going up, the combination of TST, churn and MWPL is telling me overhead supply is coming in from panic struck people who could not uh, 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 exit. So many of these PSUs and uh, non-PSUs also are still to recover, adjusted for cost of carry after the fall on 4th of June. And these are under uh, electron microscope as far as we are concerned. We are watching them extra carefully and they are telling me that the market is getting nervous, undeniable about it. I feel the market is nervous and the US market will act as a catalyst. Now, remember the tick by tick data that uh, that you're seeing on the window here that I have shared on a couple of occasions of many PSU stocks on our free telegram channel. This is another metric that a professional trader looks at without fail. And I've been monitoring the tick by tick data of many of these counters, especially on days where the intraday ranges are in excess of 3%. Why 3%? It's a subject of another video altogether. But take me for uh, uh, take me at face value when I say 3%, there is a solid reason behind it. On days that these stocks move beyond 3%, we uh, basically analyze the tick data rather carefully. And unfortunately, we see that these uh, numbers are indicating nervousness. Can it change? Yes, of course, it can change. If suddenly big hands come and start buying in large enough numbers, the market can go up. Why not? But so far, like I said last week and the clip that I shared of last week in the beginning of this video, so far the evidence is still on the downside. The other thing that I noticed which uh, makes this market vulnerable is the snap quote window. I've been sharing this snap quote window uh, with you since the last couple of weeks and I told you whenever the bid and offer spreads, widen. That is another sign of nervousness. Along with the bid and offer spreads, which are horizontal spreads, look at the vertical spread, buyer number one, two, three, four, five. That is the impact cost. Now put together the vertical and horizontal spreads are called the spread quadrant, like a plus sign. If the, if the spread quadrant is hostile to a trader because the spreads are wide all over the place, don't trade, stay out. If you don't want to short, that's fine. And maybe you should not, but you should not be buying either. Irrespective of how much noise you hear on social media, your WhatsApp groups, your uh, Facebook groups and Twitter uh, channels, etc., etc. I mean, I, I, if, if the spread quadrant is hostile, I ain't buying. So the sum and substance, to make a long story short, do I think the US market can drag the Indian markets lower? unequivocally yes it has the potential to trigger a decline in the US Indian market to what extent time will tell and of course the MWPL prevalent at that point will also tell I want to keep seeing how much of the weak hands are still in the market holding their longs the bigger is the composition of weak hands holding longs the more threat of vulnerability there is to the market now that is data that I share with you on our free Telegram channel every day.
Another aspect that tells me that the markets are appearing weak is the USD INR. If the rupee is weakening against the dollar, that's not exactly a good sign. Any and everything that's imported, particularly energy, has a higher landed cost in India, which means we are importing inflation. Friends, if I have any more ideas in addition to these, I will gladly share them with you on our free Telegram channel. But before I say goodbye to you in this video, a humble reminder to you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. And in the comment segment, do let me know how my videos are helping you become a better trader. A request here, please keep the conversation polite and positive. Also, help me reach out a wider audience by sharing my video with smart guys like you in your friends, family and social media circles as well. I thank you for your patience in being with me in this long video. Do read the, do, do check out the video in individual chapters if you don't want to watch the entire one. And I wish you have a very profitable week ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.